Good morning, Husker fans. Welcome back to the Husker Big Red YouTube channel. I'm Chris Peterson, and joining me as always is Danny Gillette. We're back here for another episode of our podcast as we're going to be looking ahead to the Rutgers game on Saturday. Uh, the Nebraska Corn Huskers and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will be doing battle 3 p.m. Central Time on Saturday. So we're going to do our keys, X factors, and predictions for that. We're also going to uh, look ahead to a big recruiting weekend as the Huskers try to pull off a flip in the 2025 class and add some uh, presence to their defensive line as, as well as some other uh, recruiting recruiting news mm -hmm. and notes. So we'll, we'll get to all that in a second. Um, before we do, make sure you guys uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, make sure that you hit, get into the comments section. And Danny, how are you doing this morning on this Thursday? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm really excited about this game. Uh, it's going to be a game of two, two very good football teams, two very, in my opinion, well-coached teams. And uh, Greg Schiano, it's always fun to play against his teams, because they're fighters, they're scrappy, you know, they're very fundamentally sound. So I'm looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, it should be a really exciting matchup. Nebraska is about a seven point favorite right now. Um, I think it was six and a half, seven. It's been kind of lingering in that area, um, which may be a surprise to some people. I feel like a lot of Nebraska fans feel like they're, I don't know, I just get the sense that people feel like Nebraska is an underdog in this game. Um, and I don't, I don't get that sense at all. I, Nebraska's, Nebraska's got the better team. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Nebraska's the better football team. They should win this game nine times out of ten. They just have to go out and do it. They have to, have to go out and execute and play their game. And, and if they do, there's there's no way. Like, if Nebraska plays its best game, if Rutgers plays its best game, there is no way Rutgers should beat Nebraska. And you said it right there. If Nebraska plays its best game, not best half or half to seal the victory, best overall game, and I think – that's one of my keys. I guess we'll start off. Uh, play play four quarters. Play four quarters. No first half drought. No second half drought. We have really yet to see a game where Nebraska's played all four quarters. You know, mostly offensively, I'll say. And I think if they want to have a convincing victory on Saturday, they need to play all four quarters. And that's up to the players as well as offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield. And I'll I'll throw this in there too. It's up to the officials. Yeah, hopefully we can get a little better officiating on Saturday. Hopefully no uh, touchdowns taken away. I mean, it's it's been a couple. I know that the Illinois call was, you know, probably if they probably got that one right based on the way that the rule was changed. I didn't realize the rule got changed, yeah. but I don't know. It's still, it's like once the ball crosses the play, I mean, to me, the play's pretty much over. So I don't know. It's still weird, but um, they definitely took a touchdown away from Nebraska against Purdue. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Just getting really sick of it. They did the same thing against Minnesota last year uh but my first key is going to be uh containing kyle Manungai, which i think is not going to be easy he's had um 100 yard games and three 100 yard rushing three times this year but virginia tech did hem him in uh, 26 carries 84 yards that's the kind of effort that nebraska is going to need on saturday and i don't even think they have to keep him under 100 yards per se but it, it to me it's all about attempts you know if it takes him 25 attempts to get 100 yards that's fine I, i'm not worried about that um i do worry you know, if he's got 25 attempts, that makes me feel like that Rutgers, you know, maybe is in the lead or it's in a really close situation. I think the the fewer att rushing attempts for um, for Kyle Manunga is going to be a good sign for Nebraska football, but it's going to test their run defense. Um, however, I do think that there's a good chance that they can hold him under 100 yards, hold him to about four yards of carry, and put a little bit more pressure on, uh, you know, Calic Manus, Ethan uh, Calic Manus, who uh, is the quarterback now, who used to quarterback at Minnesota. I know he beat Nebraska the last two games, but still, like, if uh, I mean, they, they scored 13 points in the Minnesota game when they beat Nebraska last year, so it's not like he was lighting the world on fire. And if he's if he's going to beat us, then you know, at the end of the day, I'll take that. But let's not let their rushing attack uh, beat us. So that's my first key is slowing down their running game. I guess my second key is also putting pressure on. Calc Manis, uh, he has 761 passing yards, seven touchdowns and an interception. So he's not really a guy that, you know, has a lot of turnovers. He's smart with the football. I mean, you take a look at his last couple games. He had zero interceptions in three out of his last four games and one against Akron back in September. But, you know, you look at his overall stat line, take last week's game against Washington, for example, 14-24 for 115 yards and a touchdown. So it's not like he's a passing juggernaut, but he can make the throws when he needs to. And I think my one of my keys is to just contain him and force him to make 
difficult throws as often as possible because if you let him have time and you let him kind of you know survey the field a bit, he can hurt you. But he's not like a Cam Ward or you know electric playmaking type of quarterback. But he does get the job done to his credit. Yeah, he, he definitely does. You know, he's a decent passer. He's somewhat mobile. He can move with his with his feet, as Nebraska fans, you know, can remember a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, another key, I think, for me is going to be executing in the red zone for Nebraska and, and really, you know, inside the plus 40. You know, we saw Nebraska struggled against Illinois to execute inside the, you know, in plus territory, deep in plus territory. Um, they struggled against Purdue. Their first, they had six drives, their first six drives were inside the 40 yard line last week and they got zero points um, and Rutgers to its credit. One of the things that they've been successful at is uh, red zone defense. Washington had over 500 yards of total offense. They settled for 18 points. And part of the reason they missed three field goals, but they, they were held to four field goal attempts. And so that is something Nebraska can't have happen. I think Rutgers is, 21st um i may be a little bit off on that ranking but 21st or somewhere around there in in red zone defense so they're one of the best red zone defenses in the country and i think that's like you know if you talk about game within the game nebraska really has to win that matchup because for one i don't trust the field goal kicking operation really anywhere on the field despite you know they did make four extra points in the second half i don't think that that's nothing i do think that's a positive but you know, if you settle for too many field goals that's how you lose games like this and when we get inside the 20 get inside the 10 Got to get six points on Saturday. I guess my last key, or I don't know if we're doing three keys or whatever, but um, Nebraska had 11 penalties for 94 yards last weekend against Purdue. And as bad as the officiating was, some of those were the continued um, pre-snap penalties, whole, like false starts on the offensive line and things like that. And, you know, those can really derail drives and, you know, third make third and one a third and six. So, I think a little bit less pre-snap penalties and false starts and, you know, motions and things like that will be important on Saturday. I can deal with an illegal screen because it means you're playing your butt off. I can deal with a holding penalty because you're at least trying to block the guy. But false starts and stuff like that, you know, they got to clean that up a little bit because it can derail drives. And then my last key is just going to be, you know, winning the, the, the turnover battle, or at least not losing it. Um, both of these teams have done very well at taking care of the ball. I think Nebraska's got three turnovers through five games. Rutgers has three turnovers through four games. So both that's been kind of a staple of their success. Um, Nebraska's getting 1.3 takeaways, or I mean, excuse me, 1.6 takeaways per game. Rutgers getting 1.3. So to me, it's going to be who gets, I don't think there's going to be a lot of takeaways. There might only be one, but who gets that takeaway? Is it going to be Nebraska getting an interception, a strip, you know, strip sack fumble? Can Rutgers force, you know, a Dylan Rayola interception? Um, and that might be the defining play of the game because as we know, turnover, you know, turnover margin is the most, uh, you know, imperative stat in football. And I think Nebraska can win this game if they, you know, are even in turnover ratio, but if they lose that turnover battle, that might give the edge to Rutgers. And to this coaching staff's credit, I know many fans, including us, have been frustrated at some points, but one of the things that has seen a marked improvement is that turnover margin and it's, and it's paying big dividends. So that's definitely, that's definitely a positive that we can see uh, as we continue further into the season. And yeah, and really too, you know, three turnovers total, but two of those plays weren't even, you know, if you look at Dylan Rayola has two interceptions, he should have zero. He should have zero yeah. if uh, the receivers would have went up and got and fought for the ball and, and protected the ball like they're supposed to. Because, man, when it's a jump ball, like as the receiver, it's your job to make sure it's caught or at least not intercepted. And neither, you know, Jalen Lloyd and Isaiah Nair came up short. So really... Nebraska is very, very close to having one turnover in five games. And that's that's the uh, recipe for winning football games right there. Absolutely. And it speaks to the smarts of not only Dylan Raiola, but the rest of the team as well. And you, and you can tell that that's just something that they've really worked on and that they've really wanted to become better at. And so far, it's like like you said, it's paid dividends and it's the mark of winning football. All right, so let's come up with the uh, X factors. What what's an X factor? It could be a player or, you know, just, you know, some X factor for Nebraska in this game. I hate to keep mentioning his name, but Jacory Barney. I I I love that dude. I love that dude. I don't know how, you know, I get Miami has one of the best wide receiver rooms in the country and they have outs, you know, it's it's an outstanding room, but I mean, Miami's loss was our gain and I absolutely love Jacory Barney. One of the X factors for me is I know people get upset with Marcus Satterfield about his, you know, being too cute in some situations, but run that sweep with Barney as often as possible. I love that play. It really works to his strengths in terms of being able to, 
just turn on his speed and, you know, making things happen. And it allows him to show off his athleticism. I love that play. So get your Corey Barney on the field as often as possible. Run that little sweet play. And I think that might be a recipe for success throughout the day. I'm going to say my X factor is going to be Emmett Johnson. And I know that he was uh, announced as co-RB1 this week, you know, on the depth chart. And I do think that maybe he starts the game. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I think we'll see him a lot earlier. But the thing that he's been doing that Matt Rule mentioned, he's been making guys, breaking tackles, you know, making guys yeah. miss. He's getting contact and getting more yards after that. And that's what you need in the Big Ten. You can't have a running back, you know, that goes down at first contact. And just, you know, with the eye test, he's been the most explosive you know, running back on this team. So I, I'm excited to see what he can do with a few more opportunities. And it seems like every single game, you know, whether it's as a as a receiver or a runner, you know, he's making an explosive play. So I think, you know, a couple of explosive plays from Emmett Johnson could prove to be an X factor in this game. Yeah. And to, and to you know, not to knock Dante Dowdell, but he's more of a downhill, like straight ahead runner. And he doesn't necessarily have that shiftiness that Johnson has. They're both really good running backs, but Johnson just brings that extra element to the table. Um, and I guess my next X factor um, is the offensive line. I thought they did a decent job last week against Purdue, um, you know, and there's been there was a little bit of pushback on the unit after Illinois last week, but their continued play and their continued development will be important. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing it in real time with Gunnar Gatula. So, you know, I think we're seeing different pieces come into play on the line and, so far, it's been it's been okay. I'm not going to say it's been great. It's been awesome. But, you know, keeping Raiola upright, you know, strong play on the line will be important against a sound defensive team like Rutgers. Yeah, so my X factor, um, it's going to be um, Ethan Kaliak manitz and his ability to run the football with his legs because he can, you know, it's not something that he's going to do a lot, but he it is something that he can do and – you know, we saw with the, the Northern Iowa game how Nebraska had trouble with that. We saw even with Luke Altmeyer how, you know, they had some problems with that. You know, um, Calic Manis has had in one game this year, he had six for six attempts for 43 yards. He had like 70 rushing yards in a game last year. So he can definitely do it. And it, it, even not just uh, rushing, but avoiding pressure and kind of buying time for things. So, you know, how is that rush going to hem him in, keep him in the pocket, and also just, to, you know, prevent him from escaping and getting those uh, plays outside of the pocket, getting those extra first downs. I think that's something that Rutgers is really going to have to do in this game. Cause like I already said, I don't think they're going to be able to run the football as well as they usually do. That's going to put more pressure on him. And I think he's going to have to use his legs to win this game. So that's my other um, X factor. Um, do you have any other ones before we move on to uh, bold predictions? Ty Robinson. He had a great game last week. I thought he got more involved in the play. We talked prior to last week about how he's looked tired and he hasn't really made as big of an impact as we thought. I thought he had a really good game against Purdue. So just that continued level of play, I think is going to be important for not only this game, but just to get him back in the groove again. I was really impressed with his effort last week and I'm hoping that continues this week for sure. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, they're going to need Ty Robinson and Nash and that defensive line that they're going to have to be, you know, very, I would say dominant up front if they're going to win this game. Mm -hmm. So um, let's get to bold predictions and I'll start. Um, we can do about three, I think, if we've got yeah. that many. If not, no big deal. But I'm going to say Nebraska, first bold prediction, they hold Kyle Manungai under 100 yards. Um, I think he's going to get close, but I think they're going to hold him a little under four yards a carry and under 100 yards total rushing. Nebraska will have at least five sacks, and that's because, you know, like you said, Cal Cal McManus likes to escape out of the pocket. You know, if you can get enough pressure on them, that does create a bit of confusion. So I could see where Nebraska, if they can contain him correctly, can get that five sack mark. All right, guys, you ready for this bold prediction? Nebraska Ooh. will not miss a field goal this week. They will make all their field goals. They will make all their kicks. Man, I'm glad you're not <laughs> betting your house on that or something. But uh... I just think I just think that things, you know. It's that whole thing, like you're never as bad as you look. I don't think things are as bad as they look. I think the snap has been an issue. I think that they have got it figured out. It looked better last week. And I don't think that John Hall is bad as he's looked. I also think that Nebraska is going to be, uh, you know, if they're inside the 40, 30-yard line, I think they're going to be going for it more. So if they are kicking field goals, because I'm going to hedge a little bit, they're going to be shorter. And I don't think they're going to be trying like a 50-yarder. So that'll help uh, my percentages a little bit, I think. And I think it'll also help the kickers too, right? Get their confidence back, get, you know, get that unit back. Even if they can just block the kick and it goes to the uprights, that's a step in the right direction at this point. Um, you know, let's see, another bold prediction. Uh, Thomas Vigioni will score a touchdown. He's really been getting involved in the play play a little bit more. We saw it against Purdue, even with the stupid penalty. Uh, so I think he's going to find the end zone this week. And 
I'd love to see him kind of get into a rhythm again. We talked about Ty Robinson getting into a rhythm defensively. I'd love to see Thomas Vadoni get into a rhythm offensively, and I think that starts this week. Uh, my last bold prediction, I'm going to say that Jalen Lloyd catches a long touchdown this week. I think he's going to, you know, I think he's kind of been close to breaking out, but I just feel like with the way that Rutgers wants to play, I feel like maybe they can get, you know, in a man-to-man situation, you can get one of those crossers, get him the football and kind of a break a long play. So a little bit of a bold prediction, maybe not a touchdown, but I do think that we see like a 40-yard reception from Jalen Lloyd. And, and just my hope is that he gets that into the end zone and, and just gives Nebraska an explosive play and an easy score, man. Like it just would be nice to get one of those big plays and just get the thing into the end zone. Don't, don't even worry mess with that first and goal just just get like a long touchdown and, and Jalen Lloyd I feel like is kind of close to breaking one of those John Bullock will have another interception this week that's my bold prediction because I don't know I just love the way he flies around the football you know you, you heard Tony White this week talk about how Matt Rule saw him over the course of camp last year and you know he was the fourth or fifth guy uh on the depth chart and then Matt Rule kind of made him into a linebacker and it's paid dividends and he was the highest rated Big Ten defender per pro football focus this week. And he's been getting a lot of accolades and a lot of attention recently. And it's because of his outstanding play. He's always around the football. I think if the defensive line can get to Calc Manis, then that'll create opportunities for guys like Bullock. I think Bullock will get another interception. All right, so uh, Nebraska Rutgers Huskers are six and a half point favorite right now, according to DraftKings. Uh, what's your uh, what's your score prediction? My score prediction is. Nebraska 27, Rutgers 13. I'm going to say uh, very close to that. I'm going to say Nebraska uh, 24, Rutgers 13. I think it's going to be huh? Rutgers. Will, it's going to hang around. I, I do think that, you know, fourth quarter, uh, John Hall is going to make a field goal to give us that little bit of an edge. It's going to be 21, 13. We're going to execute the drive. We're going to go down, make like a 27 yard field goal. Going to give us the 11 point lead. Memorial stadium is going to be in an uproar because we actually make a field goal and uh, it's just going to be a great day. So that's, you know, sunshine and roses. That's what I'm predicting. Now there'll one, be some and one went away from a bowl game. This is where no. we were last year, though. Remember that one went yeah. away. There, but... there were some. There will be some bumps. But I think this team. I think this team did find out a lot about itself in that Purdue game. And you know, Matt Rule after the game, you know, he said like everybody's been you know kind of talking about how you guys can't win a close game. Well, that, I mean, he's right. That was a close yeah. game. It was yeah. a seven point game in the fourth quarter. And, you know, on the road and they, they really a lot of things went bad and a lot of Nebraska teams, you know, yep. would have wilted, I think, in those situations. And these guys did not do that. They executed. They made big plays and they turned a close game into a blowout. And I think that's not going to happen the same way this week, but it's going to be, you know, a 10 point win, even though they're going to win another close game in the fourth quarter. That's my prediction, at least. I agree. And people are going to complain. I, to, you know, to that, I say, just enjoy the ride. A win's a win. They're, they're not going to be sexy. It's the Big Ten, Big Ten West, you know, in some games. And, you know, they're not going to be sexy. Just enjoy the wins. Enjoy the ride. And, uh, you know, like like you said, the Purdue game, I thought, showed the resolve of this, team, of this team. And the Colorado game was my favorite because of, you know, the fact that we beat Colorado. But this, I thought, was the most satisfying one to me. They were able to make adjustments in the second half, both players and coaches. And they were able to come out with the victory. So I'm hoping for that same sort of uh, – mentality and resolve against Rutgers if things get rough. Yeah, man, don't let Nebraska football learn how to win again because once that happens, like, imagine We're if we win all these football. close games, man. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So uh, I thought I thought it was pretty sweet, though. If you haven't seen uh, the speech from Coach, Coach Rule, it's pretty awesome, so you should check that out. Um, Chasing three, and if you want to check it, I've got a HuskerBigRed.com if you want to check it out there as well. But uh, pretty I cool thought... stuff. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was done. I was going to say, I thought that uh... – his his you know his message after the game you know I I have to fight for Nebraska these guys have to see them fighting for me and the fact that he got a flag after yelling at the officials I I I loved that I loved that and you could tell the players really liked it too so uh, I mean say what you want about Matt Rule but there's no doubt that he loves this this uh, university yeah for sure and the players love him you know he, the he's a you know, you want to call him a players coach? I think I think Matt Rule's a players coach. I don't, you know, I don't really know what that definition is, but but these players love Matt Rule. And I'm not, you know, he he obviously has not been perfect in his game management and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. But at the end of the day, like these players will play for him. And so that's something to be proud of. And and he wants and, to uh, grow them as men too, not just football players, which is something that I that, that I can definitely respect as well. You can tell he really cares about him outside of the game, and they're not, and they're not just chess pieces to his, you know, success. Yeah, he's a, and he's a great guy to have, you know, as the head coach of your football program. I think he's got 
his priorities in the right place. You know, I, I don't think he's all about winning. You know, he knows that it is about winning and he knows that he has to win, but he's not all about winning. It's, it's not win at all costs. And I think that there is something mm -hmm. very admirable about that. Absolutely. Especially in today's uh, day and age of college football. Now, if you want to ask us this question again, after the first half on Saturday, we, we, <laughs> we might have a different answer, but for now, I mean, just kidding, not for now, but you know, I think that, uh, I think that, you know, he's a very well-rounded coach in all aspects from life to football to player relationships and coaching coaching relationships. And I think, you know, that's how you build stability within a program. And yeah, I mean, and they're really, they are really close, very close to being what they need to do. And this is another big test. The Illinois game was kind of that first test and, uh, you know, they just weren't quite up to the standard there. And, and so I think they're going to learn from that. And I think they're going to, you know, play better on Saturday and beat a team in Rutgers. I think Rutgers is just as good as Illinois. I think they're pretty much, you know, they they don't have the the passing attack. They're more of a run-based team, but, you know, very similar in a lot of the things that they do. So this will be a big test for Nebraska. Um, so let's get to uh, this recruiting weekend before we wrap things up because uh, some exciting things happening. It was reported on Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday, today's Thursday, that Corey Sims, a four-star wide receiver committed to USC, is going to be taking a visit. He visited Nebraska in the spring. He's out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, we just hired Jamar Mosey, um, flipped Isaiah Mosey, so definitely got some momentum mm. um, in the show me state, and uh, maybe they can flip the guy from, from uh, USC. did sound like his dad and, and what he told Steve Wilfong is like, oh, this is just kind of more of like a sightseeing trip. That's not the exact phrase he used, but that, that's me paraphrasing. But I don't know, man. Anytime you get to get on campus, there's definitely a chance. Yeah, especially considering Nebraska has been recruiting Missouri hard over the last two years, quite frankly. Bill Bush and Mickey Joseph kind of took kind of took the lead on that area uh, with the last coaching staff. And, um, you know, I kind of find it hard to believe that this is more than just a sightseeing trip, uh, especially – when you go to the game and you see Dylan Maiola and all the wide receivers and how they've been able to succeed in this offense so far, uh, Jamar Mosey's presence will certainly help on uh, Saturday and throughout the recruiting process. So I don't want to say that Nebraska is the lead or anything like that, or, you know, they have this locked up by any means, but to me, and I don't know how you feel about this. This is definitely more than just a sightseeing trip. I think Nebraska can make some inroads here for sure. I definitely think so too. And yeah, it's going to help with, uh, you know, Dylan Raiola, and that's the other thing with uh, Corey Sims. I mean, he's 6'3", you know, he's a big receiver. So, and you look at who Nebraska is losing out of this receiving lineup, you know, going into next season, Jamal Banks and Isaiah Nair, two of their big receivers. I know they mm -hmm. got Malachi Coleman, who's going to have a chance to play next year and earn his way back into it. I also think they're losing um, Alex Bullock, who I know doesn't play as much, but he does play, you know, out there in that kind of those blocking receiver type roles. So, I mean, if you're he looking at a guy. Well, that Corey Barney sweep play for the touchdown and rule gave yeah. him a shout out. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you got, you got Barney, I'm, but the point being, you know, if you're Corey Sims, like there's no reason he can't come in here and contribute mm -hmm. next season. And the thing about this Nebraska coaching staff is look, who's playing a lot. I mean, you yeah. know, Barney, uh, Nelson, Rayola, and on defense too, Vincent Shavers is playing a lot. So, I mean, like if you're a freshman and you have the ability to come in and play, like they're not shy about it. So I think that that those things are all working in Nebraska's favor and yeah, playing, having the chance to play with Dylan Rayola certainly doesn't hurt. Yeah, and when you look at like like you said, the freshman contributors as well as the Missouri connections, and um, you know the fact that the coaching staff has made a concerted effort to recruit there, I think that goes a long way with the kids as well. So I feel good about you know where Nebraska could go with uh, Sims, and you know they've obviously shown interest in him, and it'll be interesting to see if anything comes out of Saturday. And like I said before, I find it hard to believe that this is just more than a sightseeing trip. And then um, another guy visiting Kamoy Moore, who Nebraska has been trending with, um, and he, you know, was the Oklahoma commit, the defensive lineman, um, about six foot, six one, three hundred pounds. So he's been trending. So he's visiting this weekend. Um, I think it's an official visit. I'd have to check on that. But even so, um, this will be, you know, another visit for him. And it feels like Nebraska is really getting close to a, to a commitment there. So maybe there could be a, a commitment this weekend on that front. So I'm wondering what this means for Malcolm Simpson, because when you look at this defensive line, cl line class, you have Tyson Terry, Kay Patrizak, uh, Moore, and I believe somebody else, although I'm completely blanking right now. Um, but, you know, th that's three solid offensive linemen, or defensive linemen, excuse me, in the class. And 
I'm wondering if there's going to be, you know, a decommitment from Simpson soon or if he's going to stay in the class. But either way, more is a good more would be a good get. I think uh, Malcolm Simpson just posted some Nebraska style. So I don't know. I'm not I don't want to say that was him like reaffirming his commitment, yeah. but I, I think that I think that's what he did. I think he's safe. I mean, um, you know, he's a little bit of a different player, I think, to me than um, than more. So I don't, I wouldn't. You know, I was worried about him visiting Texas. I think he's going to visit for like the Georgia game, but I don't know. Doesn't seem like there's too much concern that he's going to. Four defensive linemen just seems like a lot to me for one class, you know? Yeah. I just think that they need some, you know, that they, they've been yeah. getting some, but like, especially a chance to get a 300 pound. You know, some, I don't know, by some people like got mad at me when I said this, but I'm like, they need more 300 pounders in the pipeline. I don't mean on the current roster, but like Nash and Ty Robinson are leaving next year. And so, like, you need yeah. some guys that are 300 pounds for the yeah. middle of the. Like, you know, it's not that I'm sure that Tyson Terry will become a 300 pounder, you know, like he's 270, he's 285 or whatever he is right now. But like, you need more than one. You need, you know, I like 300 pounders. I want my team to have as many, you know, I'm not saying like a, you know, an over like exaggeration of 300 pounders, but yeah. like the teams that have the best 300 pounders win football games. You have the, 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 the guys that win games, man, like at the end of the day, it's the 300 pounders and it's the quarterbacks, like truly, like more than any other position, I would say. And in this situation, you're not asking for the 300 pounders to be like pure pass rushers. You know, you want them to, yeah. you know, clog the lanes, uh, you know, fill the gaps and stuff like that. And I, and I don't know why people got mad at you about that. That's stupid. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not. I guess they were saying. I don't know if they thought that I was like. I think. I guess they were saying I was criticizing the current roster, which I'm not. Which I'm like. That's they're two separate oh. things. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. But yeah, like Nebraska is going to need some more bulk in the middle. And at any rate, but yeah, this is a really. I think it's actually a really underrated class. I think people don't realize yeah. how good uh, Cade Patrizak is. Like you know what? And I think people know. don't realize how good Connor Booth is. I was looking at it yeah. the other day. He, he he just reaffirmed his commitment to Nebraska earlier this week. And so we have Jamarian Parker and Connor Booth at the running back position. That's pretty solid because Booth, like I was watching some of his highlights the other day, he's a stud. And yeah. I didn't realize how good he was until I just you know went and rewatched his you know tape again and. He's very, very good. So that two-headed monster at running back, and I think, I think honestly, we're going to have to, you know, maybe pay up for Parker to keep him away from some of these other teams. But assuming they both stay, that's an underrated aspect of this class for sure. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if more teams come for Jamarian Parker. But, yeah, I, I really like Connor Booth, and um, he's another guy I think uh, just underrated, you know, being from the state of Nebraska. So, um, But another guy, too, before we – forget that's going to be visiting uh Bryce Perry Wright the defensive mm -hmm. lineman out of Buford Georgia so you know 63 260 69th overall in the 2026 class so another guy to watch there um Trey Taylor is that the quarterback's yep. name in 2027 he's going to be visiting um he's um from Illinois I want to say yep. and uh got a bunch of different offers Michigan's been really in on them but a bunch of Midwest teams so um that's another that's a good sign and I like that they're trying to get in earlier with those 2027 quarterbacks because they were, you know, 2025 and even 2026, they were a little behind the eight ball. And part of that had to do with Glenn Thomas getting hired when he did. So good to see them get in early with some of these 2027 guys. Yeah. It's good to see them continue the uh, Buford pipeline. You know, you got Dayton Rayola, Gabe Irvin, you know, having Bryce uh, Perry Wright visiting. I mean, it's good to see that they're making that kind of a recruiting focus because there's a lot of talent there. And um, I, I I love the fact that they're dipping into Georgia for some of these uh, players. Yeah, and Buford, any give me any player from Buford, yep. really. You know, yep. So um, that's just, just the way that that program is. But um, Tyson Terry is also visiting this weekend. Um, Houston uh, Kahana Torres is visiting. So there's a few other guys that are – or no, excuse me, I had that on the wrong. And you know what? Kamai Moore's not – I screwed that up. Looks like Kamai Moore's coming November 2nd. I just looked at that wrong. So I'm sorry, you guys. I screwed that up. We do have a lot of visitors. That is the guarantee that we can both agree on and not screw up. We do have a lot of visitors, and uh, it just speaks to the buzz around the program. I'm really excited about Sims coming. Um, you know, I'm I'm really excited about uh, Perry Moore coming, and um, there, there's uh, there's a definite buzz around the program right now. We have to take care of business on Saturday against Rutgers, but um, I'm really happy with where this program is at. And I and again, I'll I'll end with this. I ended with this on. Uh, Monday, be happy with where the program is at right now. Four and one, you know, a chance to go five and one, uh, you know, progression and development, particularly with this freshman class. 
and just an overall solid base to the program and kind of in a lot better spot than where we were last year. Granted, Raiola helps a lot, as he should. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, one of the best freshman quarterbacks in the country. And um, I'm very happy with where they're at. And I know fans want to complain and be negative. Not all of you, but a lot of you. Be happy. Um, yeah, so with uh, so sorry for the confusion, everybody, with Kamoy Moore. So he's not visiting this weekend, but Nebraska has been trending towards a commitment there. So he's yep. scheduled for November 2nd. I just was not looking at the date close enough there. So my bad on that one, but Nebraska's still in a good spot there. Um, but, yeah, hopefully they can move the needle with Corey Sims, and uh, hopefully we will get one win closer to a, a bowl game. And I know the last uh, six games aren't going to be easy, but, uh, you know, after the last – Five, seven, ten years, however long, you know, getting five and one in the bye week or going into the bye week, I think would be a, a spectacular thing for this program. So hopefully uh, we can get it done. I think that they will. I think that they're going to win this game on Saturday. I'm pretty confident, um, you know, so that's just how I feel about it. I, I could totally be wrong. And I definitely think Rutgers can win this game. I'm not saying that they can't. I just think that Nebraska is the better team. And I really think that that last week was a step in the right direction in terms of like learning how to win and close out games. And I think we're going to see that again this weekend. Twilight was one of my favorite wins of the year. I mean, it could easily gone bad, but they turned it around, made adjustments and came away with the win. So, I mean, I, I, you know, as long as this team keeps chugging, I don't care how they get the wins, whether it's three, it's three, nothing on a field goal, two, nothing on a safety, you know, uh, just as long as they keep winning and building there, there is some tangible improvement here. And, I know we like to say that uh, on game day that sometimes Matt Rule is Scott Frost 2.0, but I don't buy that for a second. Yeah, well, we'll see how things uh, play out on Saturday. I do think that uh, Nebraska needs to win this game, so we'll see how yeah. it goes. And uh, hopefully everything is cleaned up with kicking and all that. So um, thanks for joining us for another episode, you guys. We will, uh, I think we'll be back for um, a stream on Saturday. We, didn't, we weren't uh, there last week for our pregame stream, but uh, we'll try to get that going this Saturday. So come and join us for that. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, go Big Red. Go Big Red. <laughs>